Here's a young man with perfect recall of what it's like to be growing up in your teens, the talented John Pate. Thank you. Hello, how are you? Where are you from? I'm from Alabama. I went to Catholic school. Anybody here from out of town? Are you two married? You've enjoyed the show so far? Boy, there's some dumb commercials on television. Thank you very much and good night. <laughs> now, I, I moved to California not long ago from Alabama. First thing I noticed when I got out here, there are a lot of strange people in California. It's really strange, folks. Uh, I was listening to the radio the other night. It was, I was driving down the street. This was really late, about 2 o'clock in the morning. The announcer comes over the radio and says, Be humane. Have your cat spayed or neutered. I begin to think, folks, did anybody ask the cat about this? He's sitting there one day minding his own business. You're going to what? Well, it'll be an even swap, Jack. Take away my gusto, try it, buddy. We'll see. I, I always like to think of strange things like that. Though. What do you people think of Teflon flypaper? Wouldn't it be great? Flies try and land on it, slide off, smash into the wall. Here, here's something I always wondered about. Why were George and Martha the last white Washingtons? Or why is it people who throw up on a roller coaster always get in the front seat? I always wonder, why, why is it when you have to use a pesticide fogger, you, all, you always have to leave the house? You've seen those things. They have them. You turn it on in the kitchen, leave the house for an hour, come back an hour later, your cat's dead. Roaches are carrying him out. I always wondered about this. Every time you pass a bank, there's a sign outside that gives a time and the temperature. What do they think that's going to do? Help improve business? <laughs> oh, honey, it's 42 degrees. We better put our money in here. <laughs> yeah, that other bank only offered 41 degrees. I don't know. <laughs> now, I did have to get out of Alabama. I had to leave Alabama because it was too dull. Nobody had any ambition. The motorcycle gangs wore jackets that said, born to raise cotton. I hated kindergarten down south. I really hated growing up down there because down south, they use a kindergarten teacher till she dies. I had one that looked like she had about 20 seconds left. To... Her name was Miss Fleen. She was a real senile old lady. She would always give us something to do and then she would scold us for it. We'd be playing with the little wooden blocks they give us and she would look back there and say, well, don't, don't put that block in your mouth. You don't know where that's been. We always wonder, folks, how many places can a wooden block go? <laughs> of course, every school had a tough kid. We had a tough kid in our kindergarten. His name was Waldo Brissendine. Waldo had his own gang. Uh, Waldo was really tough. He would come to class every day with a note from home, staple to his hand. <laughs> he had nicknames for everybody in the gang, Stinky, Rusty. They had a nickname for me. They called me Victim. Of course, I got up in the fifth grade, got my first man teacher. And all the guys know you cannot get away with anything with a man teacher. We'll be in the back carving our names in the desk. Who would look back there and catch us? Hey, you boys back there in the back, are you carving on them desk again? Boys, you know them things is made out of solid wood. What do you think? Wood grows on trees? Man was not too bright to... My father would say, say things like that. My father was really smart, but every once in a while he would say things dumb. We'd be driving down the street, police car whizzed by about 100 miles an hour, lights flashing, siren going. My dad would say, Huh, they must be after somebody. <laughs> no, Dad, they just do that for practice. <laughs> I always uh, wondered about things like that myself. Uh, I, I just noticed recently where they reunited these two twins on television. The guys have been separated for about 40 years since birth, and they tried to really make up these strange coincidences about what happened while they were growing up. But if you really think about it, the coincidences weren't all that strange. Well, it's amazing, no. Uh, we both went to high school. I flunked geometry, he flunked geometry. I flunked history, he flunked history. I had a dog that barked, he had a dog that barked. We both married women, they both barked. It's amazing, I don't know. <laughs> 
I guess the best thing down south that's almost the ultimate of stupidity is professional wrestling. I always like to watch that on television, and especially right at the end where they would have the advertisements for the upcoming fights. They really tried to promote them big to make them real exciting. Friday night, Municipal Auditorium, Texas Chainsaw Tag Team Deathmatch. No one will leave the auditorium alive. Be there. <laughs> I, I don't know whether you people do this or not, but I always do it. I write my letters home at the same time, like I write to my parents and my girlfriend and everybody. But the one thing I always fear, as soon as I mail the letters, did I put the right letter in the right envelope? <laughs> I just have this nightmare that one day my roommate is going to answer the phone. Oh yeah, hang on just a second. Oh, dimple puppy. Poopsie cheeks. It's for you. Yes, yeah, your father. Uh, I, another strange thing like that, I guess, uh, is the way cameras have really been improved lately. You people have noticed it. First of all, they had the camera. You had to send away the film, get the picture developed. Took five or six days. Then they had the famous one-minute camera. Of course, now you can watch the film develop before your very eyes. What I wonder is, what are they going to have next? A camera that develops the film before you even take the picture? <laughs> Call it the Kodak Futurematic. <laughs> hey, George, you know what vacation me and Ethel's going on next week? I got the pictures right here. <laughs> yeah, it was a terrible trip. We're not going. <laughs> Thank you very much, folks. You've been a great audience. Good night.